right, party people. Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, where the gaming table is always set for two. I'm your host as always, Jeff Stormer. This week I'm joined once again by Russell Collins for another chapter in our Project Wingspan campaign. We rejoin Klaus Winberg, retired veteran turned cyborg super soldier, as he attempts to win the war in his country without losing his humanity and the humanity of his friends and family. I'm really excited. I can't wait. I've been loving this game. I've been loving playing a campaign, and uh, this has been super fun. So without any further ado, let's throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, Future Me. This week, I am joined once again by Russell Collins. Russell, thanks for coming back. Oh, it's great to be back. Uh, I've really enjoyed getting uh, getting more play out of Wingspan, so I'm happy to happy to have this chance. I really love this game, so I cannot wait to dive back in. So why don't you start things off with a recap of what happened last time on Project Wingspan? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Our uh, veteran, Klaus Winberg, and uh, also a uh, you know, uh, graduate of Project Wingspan, uh, fought a battle defending a port town of Illage uh, from some fighter jets and some landing craft and some giant marching robots. Um, did a really bang up job of it. Actually, came through. You know, winning the day without causing massive uh, collateral damage and and, and so on. Uh, and then flew back home, where uh, news of the Rocket Man is spreading, and you know, Morovia's. What's this strange new weapon that they have? What are these? Uh, you know. Uh, uh, um, you know, this, what's this Rocket Man thing, this superhero that they're starting to see uh, show up on battlefields? Uh, Marta, um, the daughter of Hannah, uh, you know, Klaus's uh, love interest, uh, Marta shipped out to uh, begin her basic training um, to help console her. Klaus took Hannah on a picnic up in the hills, which was a great opportunity for them to bond and, and get together. Uh, getting back to work, though, uh, Klaus became aware of uh, some... Uh, some not so above the board dealings uh, by Gene Vossler, who apparently has been uh, falsifying some orders in order to get uh, the uh, the fancy wines hidden away in his little private stock. But when uh, when Klaus confronted Gene about this, um, they sort of came to the understanding that you know uh, uh, Gene's really worried about his his sister and you know a uh, young daughter and so on, and he just wants to make sure he has some income mm-hmm. to provide for them. Mm-hmm. And in the end, Klaus agreed, well, as long as you're not taking advantage of people, mm-hmm. you know, as long, as long as this is not about you enriching yourself mm-hmm. and just about, you know, maintaining some status status quo, that's acceptable. And then uh, Dumont, uh, an aged veteran of previous wars, wanted to put together a sort of citizen's council to help um, manage the town uh, at this time when... You know the the uh, um, the police, the government, and so on, stretch pretty thin. Um, so we talked to Klaus about that, and uh, Klaus met with Dumont to sort of talk about how they could how they could put together this this uh, sort of civilian coalition. Things were going well there. Klaus spent a little time in self improvement, just trying to get more in touch with people, mm-hmm. sort of work those mm-hmm. social mm-hmm. muscles which he had kind of let atrophy over the years. And then, of course, Commander Burza comes to him and says, "Ah, oh, there's." trouble and we need you deployed in the field excellent 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 yep i'm feeling very excited a little (laughs) worried there seems to be a bit of a conflict of interest but i think it'll work out i think it'll be fine yeah i got got nothing to worry about yeah exactly exactly (laughs) what could go wrong during a war yep so commander barza uh as you are being shipped out to uh the scrapyard where you will launch to uh to take on the the mission he begins explaining uh the situation to you um the city of sandalia um is now at threat. The uh, Hansens on the um, western border have generally been held back. I mean, their forces were trying to push up from the south and the west, and your um, your work in helping prevent that beachhead uh, in your previous deployment did a lot to to keep them at bay. Asturians, however, are making some good progress uh, going uh, in from the east. They've already crossed over the mountain ranges. They've taken control of a few cities there and are pushing further and further in. And now there's um, sort of a, a ridge of, uh, of low-lying hills that they are crossing over, heading towards the uh, city of Sandalia, which is why they decided that they can't just rely on the, you know, the, the standard forces for this. They need the rocket man. Sure, they sure, need sure. this, you know, their, their super weapon deployed to handle this threat. So uh, they get you to the scrapyard. Uh, hand you your, you know, your, your mm-hmm. smock and your injector. Um, after 
doing, you know, after dosing yourself to trigger the machine, um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the tiny, tiny robots uh, mm-hmm. fly out from under your skin, float around through the air of the scrapyard, collecting up all the bits and pieces, uh, you know, uh, tearing, uh, tearing down rusted pieces of metal mm-hmm. and then reducing them into the, the tiny flakes that then fly back and combine into your armored suit as it forms around you. Um, you can go ahead and describe your your uh, appearance as sure. the Rocket Man reforms sure, for sure, the sure. third battle deployment. Uh, it's a little more jagged this time. I, he's, you know, he's in a little bit more of a, a stressed out place with everything kind of happening. Things are things are he, things are changing in town, and that's kind of getting to him. So it's a little more jagged. It's a little more fighter jet esque. You know, the line, the wings are a little sharper, mm-hmm. and he it's a little bit less uh, sort of retro aesthetic and a little bit more looks a little more violent it looks mm-hmm. a little more ready to mm-hmm. do things yeah yeah i mean your experience with planes and, and right. the fighter pilot that feels longer ago every yeah. time you deploy every time you know that, the machine that at one time was like this is my plane yeah it's not your plane anymore now it's 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 becoming some, its own thing. it's something else i don't know quite what it is yet but it is something else mm-hmm and I'm Excellent. not entirely comfortable with that. <laughs> okay. Well, you blast off, and you're uh, flying through the air, heading practically due south in order to uh, meet the advancing Sturian forces. Um, there's a little bit of uh, background to fill in, where uh, you know, where as uh, uh, as you fly, you know, Burza explains a little more to you about uh, the uh, the progress of the enemy, and their concern is that now the enemy are deploying these rotor wing uh, mm-hmm. aircraft. Now they know you are, you know expertise has been dealing with their aircraft. So they're mm-hmm. hoping that you can deal with them. These rotor wing aircraft, they're able to advance more slowly. You know, the jets, of course, have to tear overhead and make right. numerous looping passes. But the rotor wings are able to fly uh, slowly and more maneuverably, meaning they're able to offer better cover mm-hmm. to the ground forces, to keeping the tanks defended and that sort of thing. So that's their their uh, their big concern. And as you uh, descend out of the cloud cover, you can see uh, the hills outside Sandalia, um, you know, opening out in front of you. Um, the town itself, it is, you know, a, a city, but it's um, sort of built up and down within the hills and valleys here. Mm-hmm. It's not like the big open, wide open grid. You know, it's a um, it's curving streets and that sort of thing with uh, buildings that are obviously range back, uh, some of them going back hundreds of years in a more sort of rustic style, but then built up on top of them are the, the newer uh, constructions. Mm-hmm. Sure, um, sure. And, you know, the hill, the sort of the rolling hills, which now, well, uh, they're, you know, they're, they're the, the fires and explosions of war sort of rippling uh, up and down the valleys through right. these hills. Um, and you can see the main force uh, advancing toward the city. Companies of Asturian tanks rolling along the ground, uh, including some of these much larger war machines. You've seen them in, in, in photos and in mm-hmm. the newsreels and, you know, in, in the video broadcasts. Um, the Asturians are building much larger tanks, like tanks, you know, with treads and uh, walker tanks okay. as well. They're sort of ex- expanding on that. So now you can see they've, they've nicknamed them the, the, the Blue Beetles. Sure. The eight-legged, you know, monstrosities about 40, 50 feet long that are, you know, sure. trundling across the battlefield like gigantic insects, followed by, um, you know, the, the smaller tanks riding around mm-hmm. to give them support. And with those rotor wings floating over right. ahead of them, shooting down into the hills. The um, Moravian forces are, are, you know, putting up a good fight. They've got their um, craft in the air uh, flying back and forth and their their own tanks rolling forward and, and trying to meet them there. But they just don't seem to be able to handle these new, bigger, more powerful sure. machines. Sure, sure. So what's your, what's your action? What are you going to do? Uh, I think Klaus settles overhead. He sees one of the... He sees one of the rotor wings, mm-hmm. and from his back is going to form a very large uh, laser cannon sort of running along the length of his spine. Mm-hmm. It kind of comes up, and he's going to sort of angle it and take aim and take out one of the wings of the, the rotor wing mm-hmm. to sort of force it to land, to force it to land, yeah, to force it to come down, mm-hmm. ideally without blowing up the... The jet and the people inside. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Klaus is still still going for that effect of trying to have like you know the the, the be the power on the battlefield, but not yeah. uh, not be the, this murderous thing. Right. I understand. Okay, good. Well, uh, since you're firing, that is a uh, focused mm-hmm. and observant 
action. Right. Uh, so your focused dice, you have four dice for focus. Yes. And you're going to add your observant score to the highest rolled die. Now, the opposition, these um, rotor wings... Yeah. Uh, they have a difficulty, a challenge number of seven. Okay. You want to meet or exceed that number. But they also have the buff of being very maneuverable. Right. So if you're trying to shoot at it, you're going to have to reduce your die pool by one or okay. take a separate action in order to buff your hmm. system or whatever to find some way to avoid that reduction, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, re- to hmm. debuff their, uh, uh, you know, their advantage. I think I'm going to take a debuff. I think what's going to happen, I think what I'm going to do is as I'm coming in, uh, like just lock eyes on it mm-hmm. and sort of let the machine uh, mess with my vision such that like it's kind of like driving how you drive with your eyes if I, I figure if I lock onto it and let the machine kind of take over my vision mm-hmm. my movements will mimic its movements mm-hmm. and that way I can sort of like lock onto it as best I can as I approach sure I like that okay well that sounds to me like we're actually taking something of a focus well again focused and observant you can actually use those same uh, uh, stats here, which is good because you're you're essentially asking the machine to right. bolster your observant abilities. Right. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's give it a roll. Okay. Uh, that of course gets around the buff. The challenge number is still seven. Seven. But you'll roll Great. four dice. Great. Uh, five. So there's five and a second five. Five, and that's cool. Yeah. So two fives and plus my observant, mm-hmm. which is three. So that's three. eight. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's actually nine. Remember the yes. doubled double Double numbers uh, go up. Doubled high number adds one. So that yeah, that paired five is actually a six, and that gives you nine, which definitely hits. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, that's a hit and a win result. So you've got the um, the effect, as you said, is kind of like just sort of relaxing Mm -hmm. and letting the machine uh, uh, start to you know control uh, your vision. It's it's kind of an odd sensation, sort of relaxing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like coasting. Yeah. It's relaxing, sort of letting the machine do stuff. And you can feel like little adjustments. You can feel your weight shift here and there. Uh, your, your vision changes oddly. You know, like, like the way you're focusing your eyes, it, it, you know, it feels like it's very intense, but sort of relaxed. It's like you're picking up binoculars to mm-hmm. look through them, but there's no binoculars. There. Right. Your eyes, yeah. are, your eyes are just focusing like that, yeah. zooming in and zooming back out. It's unusual. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something you've felt before because you've used binoculars, but here it is without the binoculars. Right, and it's <laughs> it, the, the coasting is really weird because I'm definitely used to flying up. Like I am used to you know hands on the 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 controls and like riding the the plane like a horse, so mm-hmm. to speak. Exactly. And yeah. so coasting in this jet that is going so fast and so violently mm-hmm. is an unnerving, unnatural experience. Yes, exactly. Now. um this counteracts the maneuverability of the rotor wing, and the good news is it also counteracts the maneuverability of the other two rotor wings, because now you Great. have a way to sort of compensate for that. So that Great. one debuff removes the bus from three of them. You high rolled a uh, five as your high roll yep. die, so I take that out of the power um, you know, power, power for the, the battle. You know, once that hits zero, you're out of power and have mm-hmm. to fly back home. So yeah, um, you've got it locked. You've got it loaded. It's time to fire away. I'm going to open fire. Mm-hmm. I'm going to unleash... Unleash hell. <laughs> that is a six. Good. So that is a nine total. Nine total. All right. That is very definitely. Now, I am going hit. to uh, spend two joy, so mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm going to drop that down to a seven mm-hmm. to uh, do a pass instead of a win. Okay. Yeah. To uh, I think he has the opportunity as he's sort of like locked in. I think he actually has to. What happens is he has to take the controls ever so slightly. Mm. Mm-hmm. He has to sort of like snap itself back in because mm-hmm. if he's flying, if he's got it locked in exactly, that means he's probably like dead center. Oh, yeah. So if he opens fire, if he opens fire, then it's going to just tear through the jet. There's actually a tiny like pull at that last second. Just as you feel the gun's about mm-hmm. to fire, you sort of like it, it, in a way, it's almost as if you're putting up your hand to sort, yeah. of, to sort of like push it aside. And yeah, the, this this. This uh, a searing hot beam of light just flashes out and slices one of the side wings off the off the rotor wing. Um, it you know begins to lose altitude almost immediately, sort of spiraling mm-hmm. around, uh, uh, kind of falling into a slow arc down mm-hmm. uh, to the ground. Uh, yeah, but if you hadn't done that, the beam would have gone straight through the center yeah. of it and destroyed it completely. But yeah, you can see it sort of fluttering down, heading down towards uh, towards the ground. And I think uh, I think. The, 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 that flash of light, I imagine, I, like I feel like I've got to look away from it for mm-hmm. at least a, like a second, and that's that's got to be a weird experience because I don't think it would affect the trajectory. 
of like the flight because the machines the machine is handling it so that's not like not it's i I imagine it's like not it's like Mm -hmm. you know sneezing in a car and then being like oh my god wait the car is still going Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfectly straight. Yeah. No, exactly. As you open your eyes, you are still floating perfectly matched to the mm-hmm. next of the rotor wings in, uh, you know, in, uh, in that that flight. They are startled. Um, this one machine, you know, uh, uh, you can see that they're they're starting to break from formation, and you mm-hmm. know, and flying out away from uh, from uh, the beetle, trying to get you know, uh, uh, um, trying to get a bead on you, and you can hear. Um, Sort of filtering through the radio frequencies, mm-hmm. which of course you know the machine is is always yeah, right. interested to know what's going on. Filtering through the radio frequencies, you can hear these these you know shouts of shock and alarm. You can hear you know these you know enough Asturian to understand that they're yeah. they're shouting like what's in and that um, their screams now about the Rocket Man, the Rocket mm-hmm, Man that they mm-hmm. they've recognized you being there and now they're trying to figure out what they can do in order yep. to deal with you because you know they've been able to push forward for. Uh, uh, a couple of battles of this campaign without having to face you. So now things are getting serious mm-hmm, they, they, mm-hmm. as they understand it. So, um, yeah, there's still the two more rotor wings in this, um, you know, in this flight, um, defending those, uh, defending those crawlers. Um, as far as like choice of targets goes, I mean, you can keep on hitting at those. You can try to get through them to deal mm-hmm. with the, uh, the, the blue beetles, but that means actually dealing with the buffs of, you know, being right. defended by the I, rotor wings, which is kind of why uh, Berza is steering right. you in that direction of take out their air support, then we can worry about what's on the ground. I think that's exactly the right. I think that's exactly the right move. Mm-hmm. I think I think taking out, I think taking out the air support is the right move. I think that's the best option to make sure that because I'm, I mean, I'm going to make sure that 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 there's at least a line drawn mm-hmm. drawn across, like for, you know, blocking the artillery. But I want to make sure. That the air support is what's is what's enabling them to move forward, and that's what I'm best equipped to take out. Gotcha. I know jets. I know planes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, take another uh, shot at them, or uh, um, take a different angle. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I mean, you've destroyed the maneuverability, meaning it's a lot harder for them to uh, right. to escape being shot at. So um, it might be quick and easy. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Is just uh mm-hmm. like uh. Swat, like you turn back around and mm-hmm. then come at them essentially upside down, belly up, <laughs> and open fire once again. Sure. That is two sixes, so that's a seven. <laughs> this is a ten total. Ten total. Uh, I can't drop that down to a seven, seven. so no. I'm going to just let that happen. I'm going to let that be a win. Okay. Yeah. Win uh, result. The... Um the change in angle um, is one of those things where you sort of feel your stomach mm-hmm. lurch, mm-hmm. but the machine kind of says, no, no, this is not a problem at all. You know, uh, uh, the gun goes off. There's number of those searing bursts. This time your your vision sort of darkens, mm-hmm. but you, you know, but you, you, you feel like you need to blink, but then you just don't. Right. You know, you don't. And likewise, you know, you, you try to pull the beam away the last second, but you just don't. Mm. And uh, that beam goes slicing through the center of the uh, rotor wing, which just detonates in midair. Whatever munitions they had on board, whatever fuel you know they had, just mm-hmm. ignites mm-hmm. immediately. Uh, this thing goes up as a fireball, and chunks of it start raining down uh, onto the battlefield. Um, yeah, causing some other uh, uh, damage as you realize mm-hmm. that they've they've pushed you over your own right. lines. Right. So that's uh, that's a little dangerous. Yep. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. Make a note there, since that is a win, there's the danger of it increasing, you know, the, the, the aggressiveness right. overall. And since that was a six, I need to tick this down. Right, we had another five before, right? So yep. I need to tick this down by another six, so that puts me at, oh, we're at 27 already? Wow, we've been rolling very high numbers. <laughs> yes, I've been rolling very well, which is not, which is... Means it. you're burning through your power. I mean, <laughs> the only thing Burza has insisted you do is take is down take the rotor wings, so maybe that's enough. But I don't know. It might be, might be dangerous to let these these. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure that I get too close. I want to make sure I take take out the mm-hmm. tanks. Yep. Um, now, does that feed your drive or your hope? Um, not really. not really. Yeah, I'm gonna so that need wind to... isn't really going to get you any extra. Joy. So, in fact, what I'm going to do mm-hmm. is before I open fire on this other rotor wing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to, I've got its attention, mm-hmm. so oh, yeah. I am going to try to, if we're over our line, I want that to be the opposite. Mm-hmm. I want to not be over our line. Yeah, drive so, it back. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I'm going to try to goad it to break rank with the, the infantry on the ground and mm-hmm. come back over 
the enemy come back over the the enemy line so that I can take it out safely mm-hmm. on their turf and not ours. Sure. All right. So you're trying to basically push them uh, uh, into maneuvering. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I kind of feel like this is a situation of you needing to be deft because okay. you're baiting them along. Sure. I mean, you, you, you know, it'd be interesting to try and outthink them, but I think really you're trying to outfly them. Yep. At this right. point. So I think what you're trying to do there is that's a fitness um, okay. dice, uh, adding your deft bonus to it. Again, the challenge is still seven. Uh, sure. Maneuverability is not an issue, so go ahead and, and okay. roll that. So that's going to be four dice, mm-hmm. and then plus two, plus an additional two, because that is one of my upgrades. Yes, yes. You have a deftness upgrade from your additional steering jets. Yes. So, four dice. Two sixes. Two Great. sixes, yeah. Uh, so that is ten total. <laughs> yep. And, yeah, so I'm just trying to pull them away. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's pretty easy for you to um, bully them, in effect, into flying where you mm-hmm. want them to go. As yeah. soon as they move, you counter move and, you know, uh, just give them a, a sort of the sight of that gun that is already yeah. knocked down the other two uh, rotor wings in the flight. So, yeah, they're pretty easy to, to push them where you want them to go. Yeah. So they are uh, backed into backed into a corner, basically. Great. And when that happens, as mm-hmm. soon as they are as soon as they are safely away from our line, it mm-hmm. is going to be open fire. Now, let's give yourself a point of joy, by the way, yes. because I know one of your hopes is about having safety, safety, over, safety over objective. Yes, exactly. And you've taken the time, taken the energy to make sure that they're, you know, that they're uh, uh, away from that. So that's that's Great. definitely fulfilling that. Great. Because that'll, that'll be helpful. Mm-hmm. Because it's this. time to open fire. Yep. <laughs> Uh, that is a five. Okay. Good. Great. So five, uh, six, seven, eight. Eight. Nine, because my plus one focused upgrade. Okay. So the, I'm going to spend two joy and drop that down to a seven. And okay. Take that as a pass. Good. Good. All right. This time the machine listens to you. Good. As you tell it, no, no, careful, careful. And you, you know, you, you uh, uh, slice through the tail of this one. Mm-hmm. It starts to dip. It starts to flutter. Um you know, it, it, it sort of floats down. Um, so then until, you know, until the troops and tanks are like racing on the ground to get out of the way as the thing just sort of slides down the side of one of the hills, just carving a big furrow in, mm-hmm. you know, in, in the, the grass mm-hmm. and, the, and the underbrush. Um, great. So now that they're out of the way and you still have some power left, Burza immediately says, all right, well, well, you know, the air support's down. We need to see what we can do about those mm-hmm. tanks. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not quite sure what's uh, 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 what to expect from them. We're getting really strange readings in the magnetometers uh, from that, or our radar signals are bouncing off all kinds of weird stuff. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to... In that case, um, I'm going to... Try to think. I fought a blue beetle before, so I'm trying to remember. I think mm-hmm. I just used. I think I just went in and bashed him with my fists. Mm-hmm. I think was. I think I had you fight the big dog before. Was it big dog or blue beetle? It was a blue lot. beetle. Blue on beetle. First. Oh. It was a blue beetle on our first. Ah, then these, these must be the big dogs. These ah. must be the next. These these are the next ones up the chain. Got it. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah, th- these things they are heavily armored. They got it. They have the look of of big insects. You can see, sure. you know, like overlapping metal plates. They've all got sure, that, sure, sure. that dark blue uh, paint that they sure. paint most of the. Uh, you know, Asturia, most of their stuff has a dark mm-hmm. blue paint job to it. Um, these things are big and heavy and strangely, um, they're long. And the way that they move seems like they're they're sort of balancing uh, uh, mm-hmm. the backs of them. The radio chatter, by the way, has definitely picked up on the Asturian side. There's a lot of scrambled shouting, now, 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 we have to go now, we've lost our support, you know, we must mm-hmm. act immediately. Um, orders like that rolling up and down mm-hmm. the line. So whatever it is they plan to do, they're, they're, you've forced their hand. Okay. Well, then in that case, that gives me that gives me mm-hmm. the exact idea that I want to do next, mm-hmm. which is, uh, it's an idea, when I said that I want to put a line, I want to put a line uh, for that artillery, I mean mm-hmm. that... Quite literally, mm-hmm. I want to, I want to cut in front of them, and uh, I think from my chest, mm-hmm. uh, like from right where my heart is, uh, essentially, essentially like a napalm gun or a flamethrower or mm-hmm. something, just kind of juts out because I want to make a large line of just like fire and mm-hmm. just cut up where it's going to be difficult for at least the infantry to move through, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. move through, and then that way mm-hmm. like, I can sort of like trap them and just- then. That'll give that way. Even if my power runs out, that gives their advantage. That puts them in a barrel and makes it easy, easy pickings. Right. Interesting. Interesting. I'm trying to think what's the best approach for that. I mean, you are firing a weapon, but you aren't necessarily firing it to hit anyone. I think I might ask you to do focused and intellectual, okay? Because in a way, you are trying to 
In this sure. case, you really are trying to goad them into sure, a behavior. Sure, sure. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're trying to, uh, I mean, hmm, I could say convince, but that doesn't seem like you're being charming. So let's call it. <laughs> I think intellectual works. Focus in intellectual. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm using, I'm using, ta- it's like a tactical, mm-hmm. I'm applying tactics to it, which I think is very, is a very intellectual thing. So gotcha. this is going to be focused. So it's going to be four dice. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what I got here, which is a five. Five. Plus one is six. Okay. Now, I should have told you the challenge. The challenge for dealing with these things is actually an eight. Mm. They're a, a further step up the scale. Okay. Um, since you're not actually attacking them directly, it doesn't, you know, their armored debuff doesn't right. really affect you. So you said it was a five, so, so six. six. So I'm not going to be able to bump that up with joy. So that's going to be a fail. Yep. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yep. Okay. So um, give yourself one point of pain. pain. That ticks down one. Yep. Um, I add one point here and uh, five. So we're starting to run low on power. We're at eleven power now. Okay. Um, but you don't actually take any injury from this. You you fly down. You score the ground mm-hmm. with a stream of fire, and this gets a huge reaction from the infantrymen and the tanks. Mm-hmm. Like they 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 just slam on the brakes. They start you know uh, scrambling backwards, trying to get out of the way. Like you know this they mm-hmm. this yeah. You've got exactly right. what you want. It's chaos and confusion, and they are falling right. back away from the line. You know, your own side actually is, uh, you know, it, they, they draw up into, into a new firing line since they've seen this, this sudden right. turn. You know, uh, there's cheers going up over the radio and, and all that, you know, and just this, this general uh, uh, outpouring of excitement. And then uh, one of, the, um, one of the, the, uh, the walkers at the front, that there's a seam that runs down the back of its carapace that mm-hmm. just splits. Okay. And the whole back of it just just falls open in segments. Just clank, right. clank, clank, clank. Just a row of segments dropping open. And you can see that hidden underneath that is a huge missile rack. Mm-hmm. And one, you know, big 35, 40 foot long missile is hastily being uh, winched up to a mm-hmm. launch position. You know. Right. The screaming over the radio is still now, now, now. No time to, you know, to... Uh, 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 no, you know, no, no time to waste. We have to act now. And you can already see the uh, smoke just billowing out of the back of this rocket as they right. prepare to uh, to fire it uh, toward the town. All right. Uh, well, then that's my target. Mm-hmm. Um, so what happens is that big giant cannon that was on my back mm-hmm. sort of like uh, extends over my right shoulder, mm-hmm. and the the muzzle of it is was sort of this big open kind of like laser cannon type thing, and it kind of narrows out and expands out into like an artillery shell, mm. okay. and uh, it kind of goes over my shoulder. So I've got like that. I've got the marksman eye on it, mm-hmm. and I'm going to. I can't. I can't let them fire at the town. Like that can't happen. So I'm just right. going to have to take full aim at this at the rocket itself. Mm-hmm. And see if I can blow it up before it launches okay. and take what risks will come with that. All right. Well, speaking of risks, this thing does have some uh, some buffs on okay. it that you're, you're kind of fighting against. The The crawler itself is still armored. Right. Meaning you have to hit it from the right angle or you're going to be, you know, trying to pierce through that. Sure. Also, there are a lot of very dangerous explosives mm-hmm. involved here. So shooting this thing, you do have to deal with the buff of the armor. That's surrounding mm-hmm. it, and the fact that the rocket itself is all kinds of nasty explosive that could, you know, hurt all kinds of people if it, if sure. it goes off the wrong way. Sure, sure, sure. So that would take two dice so out of your roll. That's going to put me down to two dice, mm-hmm. uh, and that's going to put me at, I assume this is going to be observant. Yes. Yes, yes this so is an observant, because be... yeah, you're taking, you're taking a, a, a carefully aimed shot. So, uh, hmm, I'm trying to think if I can take out any either of those. Okay, okay, no, I'm going to have to... Uh, if I've got to approach it from the right angle, then the best thing for me to do is uh, say the town safety is more important than my own and just fly at that rocket head on and okay. get in getting close and hope that the machine will protect me <laughs> when I when I instead uh, grab this rocket and smash <laughs> it and blow it up with my bare hands. Okay, so we're going to take that approach yep. of... Uh... Yeah, because yeah, I'm going to pass the armor. I'm pass the armor the easiest. That's true. The most bypasses direct, the armor. The most direct and, uh, way I have that I know how, and that's just cut it directly. All right. It is still explosive, so you're still only you're going to lose the one die. Yeah. Uh, but your your fitness for it gives you three, three dice, yep. so you will be you will be up one die from where you would be. Uh, yep. This is since you're just charging in there headlong. This is going to be a strong great action. Good. So um, that's three dice plus four, so that's pretty good. Yeah. To get, I just got to get four or better. Yep. Uh, five. Five. Great. All right. um, great, and that is a nine total. So nine I can spend total. my last point of joy 
Bring and that down to an eight. bring that down to an eight. Take a pass. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. I think um, I think what happens as I'm going is these giant, uh, almost bayonet length mm-hmm. blades just rip out of my th- my wrist, and the the artillery still or the artillery thing is still there. I think I've changed my plan, but the machine hasn't adjust hasn't like it's going away as I'm flying, and I just fly in. Mm-hmm. I grab the thing. And I almost punch it. <laughs> like, I go to punch it, just square on, and I realize what's about to happen. Mm. I look around, like, like suddenly, um, explosives start blinking, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It goes like mm-hmm. Terminator, where they start going white as I'm seeing red. Yep. And I just grab it, and I rip it out of the tank. hmm And I just fly up, and I punch it there, and then the machine <laughs> gotcha. does what it's gonna do. All right. Yeah, you tear this missile out of the tank. You, you fly up uh, uh, into the sky with it. As you're flying up, the machine is is it's doing some sort of thing. It's it's like now that you're touching it, the machine is 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 running up and down through mm-hmm. the thing, figuring out what it is, mm-hmm. how it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you, you, know, you start to just get an understanding of it. So that then when you do uh, fly up to you know to what you believe is a, a safe altitude, mm-hmm. um, you know to punch through a paddle on the side and tear out mm-hmm. the wiring and the, the, the tubes running through there. Um, the fuel of this thing begins, you know, gouting out from there, but um, the the danger levels mm-hmm. that the machine was telling you begin to fall rapidly. Great. So whatever Great. it is, you, you've diffused it, reduced its, its you know, its uh, uh, um, viability as Great. a weapon. Good. And then, yeah, you can just basically let it drop, mm-hmm. uh, you know, over a, a hill on the other side, knowing that, you know, whatever's primed to explode will no longer be primed and will Great. not explode. So you have safely disposed of a Hell's Mouth rocket. <laughs> mm. I don't like the sound of that. Yep. So that's good that I diffused it. Now, downside, there are a couple other tanks that had mm-hmm. those things. Uh, there's mm-hmm. one on, on the top of a, a, a hill further away that, mm-hmm. having seen that, they are also scrambling to fire. So there's mm-hmm. another one that is uh, that is coming online and uh, uh, trying to, to get their, their shot off. Getting there might be a little tricky because... Now that uh, uh, you are a known quantity, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and everybody is pushed back and formed up into firing lines, they are all turning their guns skyward. Sure, you know, sure. Tanks are firing their machine guns up into the air, and you know their shells aren't going to do much good. You know, infantry are doing as well. Uh, apparently, they've called up some more rotor wings from the back mm-hmm. line, so those are are flying in to try and get at you. So it's going to be trickier to get sure. to that other missile. Sure, sure, sure. Um, well, um. So, so it's on the hill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my question is: uh, is the same? Is there the same threat of explosives from where it's at? Um, from what you can, I mean, it's it's just as dangerous okay. an object as the other one sure. was. Sure. This one is a little more separate from the city. It's further outside. Okay. Uh, it's away from you know the uh, uh, the lines of uh, of Morovia. Mm-hmm. So it's a little safer for your side there. Um, you know, the Asturians, of course, are all up and down that hill because, you know, they've been trying to secure it so they could have this thing sure. uh, launch from there or, or try to get there to, to launch from there. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're, it's less a danger to your own people. Oh, quick question. Could mm-hmm. I claim safety over objective for that missile maneuver? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I right. think so. Yeah. Sure. Give yeah. yourself that Great. point of joy. Great. Good. Uh, then in that case, um, if it's if it's farther away from the city, I'm... I've still like I'm going to uh, take aim and fire with that artillery shell mm-hmm. and just let it come what may. I okay. think it's the best option. Gotcha. All right. Well, this one um, is going to be reduced to two dice. Sure. Uh, because it's uh, you know it, it, there's still the armor plating there. And sure. This thing is still dangerously explosive. We haven't you you know the machine hasn't found a way to counter that apart from flying up real close and yeah. tearing it open. You know that that was effectively a buff you know a debuff to sure. that effect. Sure. But it's a little not... little less exact than, like, running up and defusing the bomb if you're going to shoot at it. Right, yeah. Okay, I'll take the two dice. All right. Uh, I've got... I just got to get a four better. Mm-hmm. Four. Six. Six. Great. All right. Good. That is a... Uh, that is a total of ten. Ten. So I can't drop that down, but I can put... So mm-hmm. I'll take the win. I will take the aggression. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the... Uh, uh... <laughs> That beam um, sort of flickers out uh, mm-hmm. from your gun, and the entire hillside just vanishes. Mm. The whole thing is just taken up by this huge, That's... 
gout of flame. That's promising. Mm-hmm. That's that's gonna that's gonna re, that's gonna rebound. That's gonna rebound real well. Oh yeah, yeah. The, 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 the world will hear of this one. Yeah, the entire hillside basically vanishes in in, in you know this huge uh, uh, explosion of flame. The um, whatever Asturian forces on there are just immediately yeah, flash fried. Sure. Yeah. The uh, um, you know, the fireball arcs up into the sky and, and turns into a sort of a mushroom cloud of blossoming smoke. Good. This. Yeah, this shocks that runs through the 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 army like a shockwave. This this you know, like it hits just hits them all. You know, you can see mm-hmm. the infantry you know on the other hillside further away just flattening out on the ground. You know, tanks are spinning. Those rotor wings that were flying in are suddenly pushed backward mm-hmm. by this sudden like rush of the air mm-hmm. from that from that thing exploding. Uh yeah, that that's the kind of thing that will uh that will turn the tide here. That will that that'll do it. Yeah. Uh not thrilled about it, but it'll do it. Mhm. Um then at that point, um, what do I want to do now? I've got one more good. Yeah, you've got burst one, in. one action left to you. There is another one of those, um, another one of those tanks. You know, with with its missile. This one's a little more in the middle of things. This one hadn't drawn up close enough to uh, to open to fire. But you do know it's another one of those. I mean, it might be that their spirit is broken to the point that they're just like, let's not bother, mm-hmm. or they might try and take the shot. As they leave, you know. Um, um, I can't take the chance. I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't risk it. So I've got to move on it. Yeah. If it's in the middle of things, um, I don't. I super don't want to shoot in the middle of things. So I'm gonna have to take go under fire and fly in and try the same. Try that same. Yep. Okay. This is gonna be a little more difficult. Sure. Because, um, like I said, now that you know you are the target. Yeah. Right. Right. Everyone, right. Everyone's gunning for. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's hard for them to hit you. Of course, you're just this one small, you know, super mm-hmm. armored thing. Yeah. Uh, but they are all, you know, trying trying to shoot at you. So the thing is still armored. We haven't like created a, a counter sure. armor to that. Yeah. It hasn't opened its hasn't opened its its uh, port, you know, uh, uh, yet to launch. And they we do have a lot of ground fire from that. So. Uh, that's two buffs that this uh, mm. that this crawler has. I mean, if you want to fly down to do it, yeah, we can we can do that again. It's a, a fit strong action because you're going to be tearing through mm-hmm. the metal plates to get at this thing. Mm. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to rethink. Well, one of the things to note: even if you run out of power, you can stay on the battlefield right. to perform additional actions. You can, but doing that is what we call overburn. Mm-hmm. You start taking injury. For the action, whether whether you succeed or not, you will start you know suffering some pain for the the you know what what you're doing. The machine is starting to burn itself right. out in order to keep fighting. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna fly in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna fly in and just try to like peel the thing open with my my uh, my bayonets. Okay. And just like get it open so that I can grab the missile. Gotcha. And disarm it. That way they can't. They don't have the option of firing that parting shot. Mm-hmm. So this okay. is gonna be down to two dice. Two dice. Got plus four. Mm-hmm. And Target is an eight, eight? so four, Great. four or better will get you what you want. Six. Six. Fabulous. Okay. Uh, so that's a ten. Ten. So that's a win. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. We can't really buy this one down, though, so this is going to, again, going to nope. be another another big thing. Yep. Um. Yeah. You're screaming through the sky over their lines. You can feel, you know, like bullets and, and shells just sort of plinking off, off your armor, but... Nothing, nothing to stop you from from doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, scream into the the side of this uh, 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 crawling transport. I think rocks from one side to the next. As with your bayonets, you just peel apart uh, the layers of armor plate um, until you can basically reach in and chop through uh, a part of the uh, part of the missile. Um, it doesn't explode right away. You know, the, the, mm-hmm. again, the, the fuel begins to, to gush right, out of yeah. it and so on. And so you're able to turn and start to fly away. But all of that fire coming after mm-hmm. you strikes the, uh, uh, you know, the, the um, crawler that you've mm-hmm. torn open. And that is what mm-hmm. sets it off. Mm-hmm. So you are knocked spinning through the air, again, by another huge gout of flame exploding out of the side of this thing. It goes, t- you know, it, it mm-hmm. basically, the, the the whole crawler is, like, lifted up off the ground and then spilled down the side of the hill, mm-hmm. rolling into the valley. Um, you know, troops are scattered, tanks are, you know, are, are melting, just this, you know, huge blast of this thing. Um, so, that little degree of chaos is actually over the mm-hmm. anger level of mm-hmm. Morovia. So that's gonna that's gonna uh, tick things up as as we, mm-hmm. we wind this down. But 
you have defended the forces. You have repelled the enemy. Uh, you're getting, you know, uh, uh, um, shouts of congratulations coming over the um, coming over the uh, communications uh, from Burza, who, who you know also alerts you to the fact that you know your power levels are failing, mm-hmm. which you of course could see from the you know the, the way that the machine is sort of quietly nudging at you mm-hmm. that uh, you know it, it's we're done, we're done. Mm-hmm. It's time to time to power down. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what happens is uh, I'm tumbling away mm-hmm. and I'm hearing the congratulations and two things happen. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I think Klaus just like closes his eyes and lets, and as is tumbling, just like straightens out and mm-hmm. flies off. And also like he takes a degree of control. He, mm-hmm. he lets the, he lets the thing coast. He, mm-hmm. He's, he's doing this coasting thing that he's learned. Yeah. <laughs> um, and lets the thing fly off. But, he does take control to silence uh, his own radio waves and gotcha. just get, catch it as, si- as static. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't, I don't want to hear. Mm-hmm. Especially after that second explosion, I don't want to hear anything. Yeah. So yeah. I fly back, scored only by static mm-hmm. as I as I touch down and disassemble, mm-hmm. and I'm loaded back into the car. Yep. Verza is. Um, he seems a little surprised. Like when you land, you know, he he. he uh, um, Helps you know the car, and then he's you know he's like, I uh, was trying to talk to you as you were flying back, but uh, couldn't get through. Was there a, a problem with the communications? Uh, must have been damaged in some way in the explosion. Right. Well, I'll, I'll ask the uh, technicians to look into that. I yeah, that would be good. You've done a great thing today. You know, I mean, a, a victory like that, we've shown the Asturians just how well how outclassed they are. Our the superiority of our weapon, the superiority of you. Really, that that's hopefully a lesson that they will, uh, well, the survivors will take with them. I hope so. I certainly hope so. Hmm. All right. He stays quiet the rest of the drive back, you know, picking up your, your mood. After his attempts to, to cheer you into a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, patriotic revelry have sort of been uh, uh, shut down by your, your, uh, your contemplative attitude. Now... As we said, uh, the anger level yep. of Morovia is affected by, you know, the, the violence of combat. Yes. So since we had those huge, you know, stunning explosions, that's stirred people up. Mm-hmm. Or they're, mm-hmm. they're more agitated. They're more well, mm-hmm. crazed in a way. So the anger level of Morovia is now up to a three. Now, Klaus has an anger uh, capacity, so to yep. speak, of, of two. Yes. Now, what that means is that now, when you're going to be dealing with stuff around town mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and people are, are acting in anger or yep. acting on that anger or they're doing anything that's impulsive or, mm-hmm. or like that, it's going to be harder for you to deal with them. All their difficulty okay. numbers are going to be up by one cool. because of that, um, you know, that mood. Right, yeah. That's absolutely. now. Yeah, it's, it's, the mood has shifted, so it's a little bit beyond what Klaus is comfortable dealing with. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. All right. So that's what we have to face as you head back. Um, just as an aside, uh, oh. your empathize should be up by one point. We spent... Um, yes. Yeah, we spent a uh, uh, an action on that and one. I so your empathize have. should be up by one no, point. Gonna, Hannah should be at level two. I'm just going to take that. Yeah, you should take that one. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. No worries. Just a little character sheet yep. update there. <laughs> okay, fantastic. <laughs> All right. All right. So arriving back in town... There is, you know, celebration mm-hmm. going on. Like everyone's excited, like you know, um, amazed by this this outcome. Uh, Berza quietly drops you off mm-hmm. near the edge of town. So you know, I'm imagining some people are probably looking, for, you know, for you. They want to celebrate the victory or whatever. Uh, and then he, you know, makes himself scarce. Uh, and indeed, as you know, as you're making mm-hmm. your way into town, you are you are uh, just greeted by people coming down the other way down mm-hmm. the street. Uh, you know, uh, drinking wine right out of the bottles yeah, right. and, and, and celebrating like what an amazing victory. We've turned them back. Uh, you know, those Asturian uh, uh, monsters will mm-hmm. know not to come, you know, come uh, uh, threaten us again. Sure. Uh, and so on. It rings a little hollow to you. I mean, they're acting like they've won the war. Right. This was yeah. one battle. The Hansons are still pushing in mm-hmm. from uh, from the east. The Asturians, yes, were turned back away from that city, but that doesn't mean that they've stopped their push north. Right. Um, I mean, it's being reported everywhere is a huge victory. Sure, sure. Uh, but, you know, you've been there. You've seen this sort of thing. Yeah, right. This is this yeah. is not the end of this is not the end of the war. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things to note 
as the war goes on, the clock shifts. Mm -hmm. Um, There will be more power going into your battles and less time on the war clock in between. You know, the war heats up. The war wants to take up more of your life. You're going to get less and less time for... Klaus is going to have less and less personal time as things go. So just to to, to warn you, Mm -hmm. the clock is sitting at 27 for this trip back to town. Uh, I think... Klaus is going to see the, the, the celebrations and half out of self-preservation and half out of a desire to try to cheer himself up and shake off the memories of what has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, go to, like, rejoin things, keep in, look for, look for, see if Hannah is around, mm-hmm. see if he can find her, and then try to just make sure she's okay, check mm-hmm. in with her, see how she's feeling. Because um, I think she... I, I, I want to make sure she's all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I trust. I want to make sure she's okay and that she's not celebrating too much or <laughs> the other way around. Right. Right. Well, at, it's actually kind of easier to uh, easy to find because everybody is kind of out in the town sure. square. Um, yeah. And I mean, from the time it's it's evening now that you've that you've uh, uh, arrived back. Sure. Um, and so, you know, she um, had been out with other people uh, sure. attending a uh, attending a church dinner, actually, which then turned into a sort of um, turned into a, a wartime celebration, you know, a celebration of the, of the great victory. Uh, so, you know, no one's remembered to. Uh, uh, to do anything formal about this, so they're all just like you know getting drunk. But she's still mm-hmm. seated at, at one of the tables there uh, at the edge of the cafe, um, smiling and nodding at everybody, you know, and and um, you know raising a glass as all the toasts come around mm-hmm. again and again and again, you know, taking a little sip here and there. Um, she's really happy to see you when you come in. I mean, she stands up, runs mm-hmm. over to greet you, you know, pulls you over, grabs another chair so you could sit down mm-hmm. with her, and uh, starts you know shouting at somebody to get you know to get uh, to get you a plate as yep. well. Yep. Um, yeah, and I mean, all the way in, it's been people clapping each other on the back, yeah, and like right. you know, everyone like you're shouting at you, like, "Oh my God, what an amazing thing!" Blah blah, you know, and and and, and so on, just just celebrating it. Um, yeah, Hannah's um, she's doing okay, but you can tell she's still worried. Yeah, I think I want to um, just like I, I think chat with her and mm-hmm. try to like get her to open up a little bit, mm-hmm. sort of. Amidst the, the, the revelry and, you know, be like, oh, hey, great, we're going to clink glasses, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to toast, and then be like, but, you know, talk to me. Like, mm-hmm. tell me how, you, like, I can tell you're not 100%. Oh. And I trust that yeah. she can quietly tell the same, even if she won't say it out loud. It doesn't take long. Um, that might be because she's, you know, despite only sipping at her wine, she's already been mm-hmm. through a couple glasses, but uh, it doesn't take long for her to open up and explain that, you know, I'm just terrified about about what could happen to Marta Mm -hmm, I mean mm -hmm. we that was you know a victory yes we won we thanks to that um that um that Superman the uh uh the Rocket Man the Uh, Rocket Man yeah what I hear they're calling him yeah you've seen the newsreels Mm -hmm, I've seen them as well I mean thanks thanks to him we've um we've won a victory but it was so violent and I just I know Marta's She's so eager to serve. She's so eager to help. I, I'm worried. I mean, what what if that had happened to our side? Who's to say that they don't, that they aren't going to do the same thing back to us? You know. I I put a hand on her knee, mm-hmm. chastely on her knee. Yes, yes. And I say, I can't promise Marta safety. I think you know that as well as I do. I'm not going to feed you fairy tales and say that I can't. Mm-hmm. But so long as I am here, and so I will I will ensure, you know, we can only protect our own communities. Mm-hmm. I trust Marta has been raised well. Mm-hmm. She's been raised very well, and I kind of put a finger to, my light to her chin a little bit. Like, <laughs> she's been raised very well. Um, so I think the best thing we can do for Marta is know that She's been raised very well and know that the community that she's coming back to is not one of violence and destruction and death and warfare. And she's coming back to a a better place than Mm. she left from. Mm -hmm. I like that. I lost 
So it sounds like you're trying to be, uh, uh, you know, charming. Yep. Probably a little more empathetic. Are you, are you trying to, like, grow the relationship with, uh, yeah. with Hannah? I mean, yeah. there's another degree to be to be gained there. Yeah. Um, sure. Now, the, I think we, we can do that with uh, uh, a charming and okay. empathized action. Great. The um, difficulty is up a little bit because, you know, things are, are sure. violent in town. Sure. She's a little nervous about this stuff. I think this is actually going to be a difficulty of eight. Okay. Um, you already have a bond with her, yes. which is great. But when you're trying to increase a bond, you're trying to grow ever closer to a person. Sure. You're trying to, like, take the relationship to the next level, as sure. they would say. Meaning that it's a little more difficult to do mm-hmm. that. You know, it's yeah. one thing to go from, hey, let's hang out, to, hey, let's be an integral part of each right. other's lives. <laughs> yeah, right. And there is the, the additional, you know, negativity of, of, of the anger about town. Mm-hmm. So I, I think difficulty eight okay. should re- reflect those you know, the, the, the way that it's a little trickier to do this. There's no buffs uh, okay. standing against you because she's not, like, putting up any, mm-hmm. like... You know, any any shields uh, uh, saying, like, oh, I hate you. No, nothing like that. Okay. Um, yeah, all right, I'll go for it. Um, that is two dice for your two choice. Dice and your empathize is plus one. one. So I wouldn't, so I'd have to just you'd get a six. The, you'd have to get a six. And then spend that joy. Well, or to get two sixes. Or get two sixes. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that, it might get tricky to, to try and yeah, pull this it off. Might, it might not be an option to, to, to grow the relationship. Yeah. I can at least allay her fears. You can still spend the evening with her. Yeah, and in I all honesty, this point. can still be a chance to try and grow, empathize. You can spend yeah. the evening with her. You I think can that's a good plan. Roll the die, roll the die, uh, uh, roll a die, and, yep. you know, and upgrade your empathize from just spending the time with her. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Got four. Four. Okay. So what that's going to do is it's going to tick four points yep. off the the uh, the clock, um, but mark one of the, mark one uh, of the mark yeah mark one of the boxes underneath your empathize. Right. Um, so your empathize is one. If you do this one more time, your empathize will go yeah. up to two. Great. So. So yeah, you, you spend a, a, an evening chatting with her and, and calming her down and telling her. And in the end, she sort of says, you know, I agree. Morovia needs to become a place of love, not yeah. a place of hate. Yeah. Yes. You're right. Well, I guess it's late. I should probably get back, uh, you know, get up early in the morning and uh, <laughs> get to work uh, cooking. Uh, she's been picking up a lot of uh, uh, side jobs, and there's sure. a lot of there's a, a lot of uh, uh, cooking that's being done now, creating like uh, um, you know rationed food and you know, rationed sure. lunches and so on to to send out to troops. So sure, a lot sure. of uh, a lot of people are doing that sort of that sort of work. So um, yeah, she excuses herself and the. Rest of the party goes on around you. Uh, you know, more people mm-hmm. getting drunk and crazy. Uh, good news. Since uh, you did uh, take a point of injury mm-hmm. uh, from that, you know, there's a, a, a degree of despair that might have mm-hmm. started to affect the town, but the success there nullifies that. Great. So that's canceled out. Great, great, great. So um, people are a little angrier, but they're not going to get more sad. <laughs> good. That's good. I, I can live with that. <laughs> yep. Um, so I think the next thing I'm going to do, mm-hmm. I've been thinking about this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to track down Gene Wassler. Mm-hmm. I think we need to have a chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> Especially because um, there's already been, a, you know, you know that Citizens Council that yep. they, they put yep. together? And it, it's, you know, it's been a, a while since that was set up. Mm-hmm. And there's already talk about, like, uh, uh, rationing and, and so on. And Dumont, uh, you know, the, the older gentleman, yep. um, has, uh, uh, you know, got a few people on, on the council with him. Um Mostly people of his generation. Sure. And one of the things that he keeps warning about uh, uh, to people whenever they're out, you know, uh, at these council meetings and speaking in public is warning people against black marketeering. Mm-hmm. You know, the danger of people hoarding food and, and so on. Like, you know, what, like our, you know the, the previous war might have been over months earlier if people hadn't become so selfish mm-hmm. and, you know, and stolen from the, the troops, you know, what they needed in order to, to win. That, that's kind of become his... Um, his refrain, mm-hmm. really, in, in almost every uh, uh, public event where he gets to speak is, is this this concern he has. And you know Gene's dipping in, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, probably a good idea to try and track him down. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it's easy enough to find him, you know, working uh, at the winery. Um, mm-hmm. He, like a lot of other people there, are now, like, pulling double shifts sure. to cover, sure. you know? I mean, his son used to do a lot of the, the work in the warehouse that he mm-hmm. is now doing, and... You know, he's not as young as his son, so he's working a lot harder to do it. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, uh, you'll find him um, just, you know, hefting boxes back and forth and, and looking at log sheets and tracking mm-hmm. which boxes are going where and, you know, and, and doing his, his factory management stuff. Uh, I come up very uh, 
professionally mm-hmm. come up. Um, Mr. Wassler, how are you? How are you doing? Oh, good to see you, Klaus. How's uh, how's the security business? It's good. It's good. Secure. <laughs> I guess it's how you'd want it to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, could I steal you for a moment? Um, could I? Could we? Could we have a a, a chat as a manager and employee? <laughs> Um, sure. I suppose we can do that. Um, I can just ask Paula to, uh, mind the floor for me. Uh, yeah, it'll only be for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he waves over to, you know, to Paula, uh, and then steps back with you. There's a little alcove, mm-hmm. uh, off to the side that has kind of become his makeshift office. You know, Great. there's a, um, you know, a, a, a rat, you know, a ratty beaten up old desk there, just piled yep. high with, with papers. And, you know, he has a water pitcher there and he pours out a couple glasses of water and hands you one as he takes a long sip from his. What's, uh, what's on your mind, Klaus? Um, and he looks back over his shoulder, mm-hmm. makes sure that they are as alone as they can be in this crowded mm-hmm. building. Mm-hmm. And he says, um, I wanted to talk to you about the talk that we had a few days ago. Right, about the, um, right, the shipments. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure you've heard. I'm sure you're aware of, uh... Dumont. Dumont, yes. Um, yeah. So you know, so you know why I'm here. <sighs> I've, um, I've tried to keep things, you know, we're not, I'm not. I, I trust that that is correct, but I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make sure of that. I wanted to, uh, give you a word of warning and a word of promise, Mm. I guess is how I would describe it. I wanted to warn you that, uh, Dumont is very hard on this on this type of business yeah he has been uh it sounds a bit like he is rounding up a he hasn't made any overt moves yet but it's feeling certainly like he's making okay i you know i mean jesse she needs to start her treatment soon oh. though i mean i need i need a little more time you know well, I mean, i've been able to to well, that's why I've come. I wanted to warn you that that's happening and make sure that you were preparing for that. And I wanted to check in to make sure that you were not taking advantage of anyone. And I wanted to advise that if you were generous in your actions, not taking advantage of anyone and making sure that people were provided for... Mm-hmm. That uh, perhaps Dumont could be talked down. I don't know for sure. I haven't talked about this with him, but well, I think especially if someone on his on his uh, council hmm. were to bring that up, I think that perhaps he could be reasoned with. I think he's a good man. I'd be very grateful if you if you could talk to him. I mean, um. Like I said, I've, I've tried to cut back. I just I have to make sure right. that, that Jesse gets you know the 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 medicine that she needs for her, um her you know her lung. Um. I wouldn't ask anyone be put in a position. It is important that everyone stays safe and healthy. That is the most important thing to me. Right. I want I I just I want to make sure and and I I I think as long as you're taking care of the people in this town, I don't have a problem with it. I think that's people first. Right. So I, but I wanted to give you warning and make sure that you were taking the precautions needed that if things got hot, you were ready for it. But I also wanted you to know that I still support the things you're doing because I know the good that you're dealing, you're doing. Thanks, Klaus. You, you're a good man and we we need good men right now. I certainly hope so. Well, it sounds to me... Uh, like Klaus's next move is to go and talk to Dumont yes. uh, about all this stuff. Um, yes, I think the next move is to befriend Dumont, mm-hmm. get, a, get a bond with him. Yep. And uh, that way, if Gene's actions are caught, I can mm-hmm. whisper, I can I can highlight the good that he's been doing in the community mm-hmm. and try to ensure that that good keeps happening. Okay. So Dumont uh, is easy enough to find at the, the sort of, the, you know, his... Uh, um, 
you know, his, his uh, citizens' council meetings, mm-hmm. which now are running almost constant. Uh, sure. They basically carved out a niche for themselves in the town hall. There was an old unused office. Uh, you know, that they got the, the mayor to let them, let them in there. And, and so now they, you know, that they've taken all the, you know, the beaten up old desks and chairs mm-hmm. and so on and, and spread them out. They've, you know, tacked some Moravian flags up on the walls and, uh, you know, have sort of really made this into a, a business, you know, in, in a way. In fact, when you come in, he's organizing, um, what, you know, they're trying to put together a parade. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. you know, and they're gonna, you know, he's, he's right now talking with the, um, with, uh, the, uh, uh, Mrs. Molino, who, um, teaches the orchestra at sure. the school, you know, because she's going to be putting together the marching band that's going sure, to accompany sure, sure. this thing. So, you know, uh, you know, they they go back and forth for a bit. Uh, some some uh, uh, banter that gets slightly argumentative and then mm-hmm. shifts back and forth until finally uh, it winds down to the point that um, Dumont is able to look over to you and say, Klaus, uh, what, uh, what can I do for you? Um, I wanted to check in. I realized that I've perhaps been a bit spacey lately. Hmm. And I wanted to, I've been considering what you said, mm-hmm. and I think you're right. I think that we need, I think that we need as strong a, a council as we can, and I am here to tell you that I'm in 100%. Well, that's excellent. I know that I, I know that I had some reservations earlier. Mm-hmm. I know that I was, I was worried. And I, full disclosure, I still have concerns, but... I want you to know that if it means keeping the soul of Morovia safe, and if it means putting, and as long as we are putting the people of Morovia first, hmm. I am in a hundred percent. Well, that sounds like an excellent, <clears throat> excellent idea. You know, one of the things I'm hoping to do with this um, uh, uh, citizens' council is to well, we're putting together now a a, a um. A sort of patriotism event in town. I'm going to have the, the marching band. All that. But I honestly would love to be able to take this uh, uh, to the other neighboring mm-hmm. towns, you know, to, to reach out to them. Sure. I've even considered maybe sort of a, 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 a speaking tour sure. uh, where veterans like you and like myself can go visit oh, these places. And My you know. my achievements are nothing compared to yours. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't sell yourself short. You're... A veteran, a strong man, a patriot. You've done a lot for Morovia, and I, I think people need to see the example. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's true. This is true. But, I mean, my my my, my veteran, my service, my service, mm-hmm. this is true, but my service, it was in peace, like, was, it was, you know, I flew cargo planes, it, I... I think people would be more valued hearing your voice and the voice of your gener- the voice of your generation. And I think No, 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 I won't hear of it. If you're going to be part of this council, then you're going to have to come with us for that uh that outing. In fact, uh we're just drawing up some plans now. Why don't you uh why don't I pencil you in for a few dates? He uh opens up a big uh calendar book on the on the desk. So I think I'm gonna I'd like to try to convince Action mm-hmm. to get him to to butter him up to uh, get him to commit to the date so that I and offer to manage things mm-hmm. back at back at home. Gotcha. Both okay. because both because I know that uh, it'll it'll help me if 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 any wind gets caught of of Gene's actions, mm-hmm. and it keeps my profile a mm-hmm. little bit low. I know that that is one of my orders is to not get too yeah. caught up in things. Gotcha. Okay, now this is a little tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a difficulty of eight. Great. Because, uh, uh, you know, we're in, in an anger situation and all that. Also, there's a debuff because okay. he is a stubborn SOB. He is a guy who, he, he's decided you're doing this thing. He said, we'll pencil you in for some dates, meaning I am penciling you in for some dates. So, you know, trying to wrangle the situation around to it being in your hands and not his is going to be tricky. I think I know the debuff. I think I know the yeah. debuff for this. Okay. Okay. What's, what's, the, what's the attitude you take? I'm going to bore him. Bore him. I'm gonna bore. I'm gonna bore the. I'm gonna bore the pants off of him, mm-hmm. and I'm mm-hmm. gonna say, you know, I do have a couple stories. Like there was a time mm-hmm. where I had to fly a shipment of mangoes mm-hmm. from Port City to Port City and just get like 
drone on mm-hmm. for in a, as long as it takes mm-hmm. to just like convince him like to wear him down oh this man has no interesting stories because i'm like this is the greatest mm-hmm. because what was happening is they had given me 400 they had given me 400 pounds of mangoes but i only had enough room for 385 pounds of mm-hmm. cargo because i had 15 pounds of fuel that i had to you know make the flight so i think it's a lot of like me laying out in absurd levels of detail about like <laughs> see the tricky thing about a cargo claim form for customs is they say you're not supposed to bring anything living but there's some really (laughs) weird (laughs) distinctions about what constitutes living i think you've avoided being charming and you're looking at just being focused and intellectual i'll take it in order to uh in order to work your way around this yeah i'll take it because you're just you're just trying to recall as many bland details as you can yep so that's uh Four dice for your focused, yep. and Good. then uh, one intellectual. Uh, his stubbornness is still kind of I'll, part I'll of that. I'll take the debuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this but will remove the stubbornness from your attempting to charm him yeah. if you, you still want to work that out. Yeah, I think yep. that I'm still going to make the move. Yeah, though. but this, this will lay the groundwork for that. Two, four, six. So that's a seven okay. total. So I'll spend that point of joy to take that to Eight. take that win. Take pass. All right. Take that pass. Good. So that was a six on the yep. die. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he, he sits there like with his pencil mm-hmm. held above the held above the the, the calendar for mm-hmm. a long time. You know, he, you know, smiling through <laughs> through his thick white beard. Uh, and after a while, uh, Ms. Molina sort of drifts away, and he's still saying the smile is getting a little 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 uh, little strained. As, as about the time you're talking about like what are the distinctions between living things on these farms? Because after all, does a plant count? You know, a fruit? Right. Does, a, does a vegetable? Because like, if you look at this, like you know, is this a fruit or a vegetable? And you know, does that change the designation? As you're getting into and all then that you stuff, get into tomatoes, yep. and that's a whole thing. Yep. I mean, the, the, so the smile is no longer there, and he's slowly tapping the pencil on the uh, the calendar pages. Uh, uh, you know, obviously just so. Uh, Klaus, then can I um, can I put you down for anything? Uh, I'm sure whatever dates you'd like, I'm all in. It sounds great. Unless, I mean, unless you think that it, I'd be better suited at home. All right. Sure call. So we're still trying charming and convinced yep. to get out of this thing, because otherwise he's just going to write it down anyway. Yep. Uh, but there's no longer a debuff, so you get to roll okay. both your dice. And okay. uh, it's convinced you get to add three to the high yep. roll here. Still that great. same challenge. Three, uh, three, so that's four, four seven. Five, six, seven. That is a fail. Oh. So I will take that fail. All right. I'll take those dates. <laughs> Yep. That was a three, so take yep. this down again. Good. Okay, fine. Well, then, he just sort of at random mm-hmm. just scribbles a few things down there. He, he writes them out on a piece of paper, mm-hmm. hands it over to you, and says, just get clearance of this with Gene or Nilla or whoever, and you know, sure. I'm sure they'll be fine with that. Sure, sure, sure. Now, you take a point of pain All for right. that loss. And that's going to put me over my threshold. Yeah, it puts you over the threshold of the machine. Um, so there's frustration mm-hmm. at this. You know, there, there's frustration uh, uh, over this thing, like because you you worked at this. I I, I thought you played the, you played the game. You played the game. You did all that stuff, and normally this works for for bureaucrats and whatever. Like, why yeah. didn't it work with this with this guy? It's it's frustrating, and the machine replies to frustration. The machine mm-hmm. replies to anger. It replies to to you know be, being upset, and you feel something sort of shift inside. You know, there, mm-hmm. there's this, 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 you know, that, that you feel that that energy well up and then something just, it's like someone dumps ice water over your insides, you know, like, no, don't be upset. Don't be, don't be freaked out. Don't be mm-hmm. worried about this whole sort of thing. Something just takes over that and the emotion just drops and you feel, well, okay, that's life. And you stand up and walk out of the room sort of, you know, before you even realize you're walking away, you're out of the room, you're walking down the hall, you're leaving the town hall, and then, you know, you're in the square before you sort of come to yourself and say, like, oh, what's, what was that about? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So increase your permanent and machine rate by one. by one. Now, you were in a scene with this guy. We did roll some dice. Mm-hmm. If you do want to form a bond with Dumont, you can. It'll be a level one bond. I'll form that bond with him, yeah. Okay, good. And then we'll have that there. Now, one of the things to remember, um, whenever you're in any scene with these people and you roll dice, it doesn't have to be your driver. Right, you sure. can still potentially get joy from that or okay. bonus points of joy. Sure. Uh, like, you know, with Hana. Unfortunately, we turned it into a training scene instead of a challenge. Sure, sure. But, you know, these are these are really your, your, your yeah, s- right. best sources of joy is to find these people and interact with them a lot. Um so I think my oh, here, here's a rules tweak that I just made actually. Go ahead. Uh, the other day, another fun thing about these Bond characters. Normally, you get joy from a win. I've decided that um, 
You should be able to get joy from nearly any interaction with the Bond, so passes will also count. That makes sense. But only for them. Only for Bond characters. Sure. Well, I'm going to go... So I'm a little bit salty now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a little bit fire. I'm a little bit fed up. So Mm -hmm. I am going to... uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to uh, swing by, swing back by the winery. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Swing back by the winery. I'm going to talk to Gene mm-hmm. and see if I can't convince, see if I can't get him to give me the give me the afternoon off to take Hannah out on a date. Because hmm. I want to lift my spirits. I'm a little bit sure. That sounds like a good idea. Give me an opportunity to 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 vent about this mm-hmm. gentleman. Okay. Um, as you head back to the winery and go looking for Gene, you find he's not there. Uh, Nilla, however, is in the the front office and. Um, she uh, uh, explains, oh, he got up and left. Something about his daughter. I had to um, ask Paula to fill in for him for the rest of the day, I guess. <sighs> Everyone's got a disaster going on these days. Yeah, I guess everyone does. Um... All right, back to work, I guess. Mm-hmm. As you're turning around and on your way back, you realize that Nilla has these ledgers taken mm-hmm. down off the shelves and sort of spread out uh, all around her. And she's also got a bottle of red ink sitting on the desk, which, you know, not you kinda, yeah, it, it's kind of a sign. I mean, you know that she's old school in mm-hmm. that fashion. I mean, she's not a, she's, she's a young person, sure. but, you know, she's old school in that way and that she uses the properly colored ink for the properly colored ledgers. Mm-hmm. And that means that if she's got the red bottle out, things are not, are not going well right now. Right. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to spin on my mm-hmm. heels mm-hmm. and say, um, I realize it's not. Entirely my place, but, um, is everything all right? Uh, well, things aren't great, I'll tell you that. I mean, it's a wartime economy. Sure. Wine. Who wants wine right now? And we ship it around to the, the, um, the officers and all that sort of thing. They're not allowed to give it to enlisted men, of course. Most of our stuff came from, our our biggest income came from exports, and (laughs) we've lost control of our port towns. All this stuff is just going to sit there and, and rot on the shelves. And I've got a whole stock of the reserve that's just gone missing. I mean, bottle missing. after bottle that I just can't account for. I I don't know. I mean, I know we've already had to reduce staff with all the people who've gone to, you know, gone to um, the front and, and to basic and all that. But I'm really worried. If we aren't able to... If this war goes on for a few more months, I'm going to have to start letting people go. It's just there's there's no there's no market. There's no way to sell this. There's no way to keep the place functioning. I mean, I have to... <sighs> it's just, it's frustrating. I, um... We were kind of promised that this this whole thing would be would be quick, over and done with, you know? Yes, I... I mean, they had this, this super thing, this, this rocket man. Rocket man. That's what I hear they, they call it anyway. Yeah. But I mean, if, if it's so amazing, then why, why isn't this war over? Why have they only brought it out when things look, look like they do? I mean, it's, it's, if we've got this super weapon, why aren't we just using it? Why aren't we just, why don't they just fly it out to the capital of Astoria, burn it to the ground, smash them all, this whole thing will be over Everything will go back to the way it was. Um, I'm going to convince her to calm, I guess, uh, mm-hmm. calm down, car- calm down and carry on. Keep mm-hmm. calm and carry on, yeah. as it were. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to try to convince her to do that by any means necessary and just okay. be like, well, it's, war- it's, it's, it's not that simple. I mean, then mm-hmm. are we any better at that point is, I guess, the, the point that I will make. But I want to try to convince her mm-hmm. just, just to calm things. And if I can convince her to... Trust that everything's okay and not look mm-hmm. too far into that missing wine. <laughs> That's just a bonus as well. Right, right, exactly. Difficulty for this uh, challenge number is going to be seven. Okay, which is a little little easier to deal with. Um, I'm trying to think if there is really a buff of her frustration. I think I think her challenge already reflects the general mood of anger, so I don't think there's a need for okay. me to add any additional buffs to that. So let's uh, let's just go with the, the basic challenge okay. of seven and see how how good you sure. are. Three. Four, seven. Seven. That's okay. pass. You hit it. Yeah, I mean, it takes a while to, to calm her down and talk her down. And uh, at one moment, it looks like she's about to knock the bottle of ink all over everything. When you just sort of, like, stay her hand to, to mm-hmm. calm her down with that. And, and, you know, when she realizes that, it's sort of like, you know, she sits, you know, she slumps down into her chair. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, turns to one side, pulls a handkerchief out of her pocket, 
he starts, you know, dabbing uh, at her eyes. I'm so sorry. I, I know I shouldn't get so upset. It's it's a scary time. It is a difficult time. But the the best way for us to get through it is together, and is as a group. You're right. It's um just it's this way everywhere, I suppose. I I've never served in a war, but I've served in, and I can tell you uh, everywhere that I've been. There's always anxiety, and there's always there's always panic, but to get but it's it's with each through each other that we we get through. All right. Well, I better get back to these books. Um, you were looking for Gene, right? Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask him for okay. the afternoon off, but yeah. that's fine. If if we need the if he's out, we need the extra manpower. Yeah, so. I mean, if you have. The chance, and you do run into him. See if you can ask him about these these reserves. Here. I'll ask, I mean, the numbers I'll ask are him. That's, much lower than they should be. I'll ask him. That's that's odd. He'll probably he'll 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 have an answer for that. Well, um, thanks, Klaus. Thanks All for right. talking with me. Yep, of course, of course. So, um, let's skip ahead a bit. Sure. Been a uh, you know been a um a good couple of days. Sure. Um, yeah. Hannah's gotten some messages back from uh, Marta, um, who great. is you know seems to be seems to have taken to this quite well. Great, great, great. Uh, she always couches her victories in response to uh, Brand, and you know, yep. and, and who's who's doing better at this? Who's a better marksman? <laughs> who's a you know who can do more sit ups? Yeah, right. All of that stuff. It, 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 so there's this that you can tell there's this this delightful little competition between the two kids from the hometown, you know, chatting back and forth. Right. Um. So that, that, you know, uh, helps the time, uh, to pass. Um, and soon, um, b- 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 what are, Dumont and, uh, Paula are asking you to help them out with a sort of a, a dry run of the Citizens Council, uh, speaking events. That sounds great. I think I'm gonna, um, I think, yeah, that sounds fine. I'm gonna show up and I think I'm going to give it my best. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, I think now that I've been bought, now that I've been uh, mm-hmm. signed up, I see there. I don't think there's any reason to play boring. I think. Yeah, exactly. Finding it within is probably just as good an idea. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he he stands you up in front of the uh, assembly room um, at the uh, at the uh, uh, um, you know at, at the city hall with a, with a sort of a plant audience, a sort of a, a test sure. group. Yep. Uh, the kids from the high school come out and they play the Moravian national anthem and a few other patriotic songs. One of which has a, a sort of delightful history of having been a uh, uh, you know an old uh, folk song about a badger mm-hmm. before it was then uh, updated and replaced with lyrics about uh, the you know the, the the love of the royalty <laughs> the royal family for one another uh, you know somewhat mm-hmm. scandalously sure. was later revealed and then that one was further updated uh, when the uh, monarchy was abolished <laughs> to become a, another patriotic sure. tune that everyone enjoys whistling as they as they work sure um, and then he hands over the podium to you and says, please address these people and tell them uh, of your your great patriotism for the country and your feelings of how we will win victory over the beasts of Hansa and those Asturian monsters. I gave you the floor, Klaus. Okay, I think I'm going to take the floor and I think mm-hmm. I'm going to uh, not do that. <laughs> I think I'm going to uh, tell a story about... Um, I think I'm going to tell a story about my time in the military mm-hmm. and about how... Uh, the great thing about, uh, my time in the military was mm. not the action because we, it was peacetime, but my, my, it was the camaraderie and the trust in one another mm. and how that is something that can be shared between military and civilian, between civilian and civilian and, and between, uh, everyone, mm-hmm. everyone can share in camaraderie and brotherhood. Everyone can share in joy and trust and peace and love mm-hmm. and that is how we win the war it is not through bombs and grenades because that is the those are the tools of the enemy it is through our humanity that we win that okay. we triumph challenge number is eight okay would this be convince or empathize um you tell me which you think I'm you gonna know. say convince sure. I think this is because I'm not trying to like feel them. I'm not trying to, like, feel them. I'm just trying to, like... You should, you should have oh, to yes. I should. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to feel them, like, give them mm-hmm. a sense of... Uh, or I'm trying to, like, relate to them to the fact of, mm-hmm. like, we should be better. Yeah. That is a three. That is a six. So that is a fail. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
the people in the crowd are really very happy with your speech. You know, there's some applause uh, at the end. You know, the, the school kids immediately whip up into another patriotic song as they, they play off the stage. You know, and, uh, um, you know, everyone's smiling and nodding and Dumont uh, uh, smiles at you. And then he uh, puts a hand uh, on your arm and squeezes a little tighter than is, you know, cordial. Mm -hmm. And starts to, let me just have a chat with you, Klaus. And he pulls you around, uh, uh, you know, into, uh, into you know, his little office space in that, that part of the building. I think I, I move a little bit uh, looser than I probably should for somebody of his position. A little more flippant. Mm -hmm. A little more, mm -hmm. a little bit more of an attitude. <laughs> Klaus, uh, sit down. He pulls a chair out and, you know, uh, sits down on the other opposite side of the desk from you. Temples his fingers across it and meets your gaze. Mm -hmm. Klaus... I know you have sort of a, you have the heart of a peaceful man, and that's a wonderful thing to have in the right situations. That's, this is not the right situation, Klaus. That's not what people need to hear. Yes, okay, it's all well and good to talk about peace and all that sort of thing. You do that at the treaty table. You don't do that while bombs are still falling and people are still dying. I'm not sure... Maybe it's because you didn't serve as I did that you don't feel the same way, but I don't understand, Klaus. What, what is it going to take to get you to, to see how serious this actually is? People are dying. Terrible things are happening. Towns are burning to the ground on both sides of the line. And you just keep spinning these tales about, oh, it's all going to be great and we're all going to be friends. It's all going to be wonderful. Where does this come from? There's got to be steel in you somewhere, right? Where is it steel? That the steel is holding up the hope is where the steel is, Dumont. You asked me to speak, and I spoke about the matters that I know. Hmm. You asked me to speak. I told that you asked me to tell stories of my time in, in in the service, and I told the stories that I know. I I offered to I offered to let you I offered to let you run these rallies your way. Hmm. You you insisted. You put me down for dates. This is this is what I have to offer. This is this is what I have to say. If you have a problem with that, if that's not what if that's not what these rallies should be, that's fine. I will handle things at home. But if you put me in a podium, these are what I'm going to say. Oh. Because my steel is holding up my belief in Morovia and its people. It is the best that I can offer. And if that is not what you want, if that is not what you prefer for the rallies, then perhaps I am better suited handling things at home while you travel and speak on my in, in my place. Well, I suppose you've got that right. He slams open the calendar on his desk and uh, pulls out his pencil and begins, you know, making some big black strikes through several dates there. Oh, so I just don't understand. What we need now is patriots, people who are willing to, to take the hard line. You talk about peace like that a little too much, people start to wonder. You know, if it's peace at any cost, does any cost include surrender? Because we're not a people who surrender. I never said we were, but point taken. Well, I'm sure I'll see you around town. I'm going to go sure. back and plan some things out. Uh, maybe it'll be easier for us to get from place to place now that we have one less person coming with. Probably. Probably will be. It'll be great. Mm. I'm going to give him a salute that's a little bit floppier than it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't bother returning the salute. He just keeps his eyes sure. fixed, down, fixed down at his book pretending to write stuff uh, sure. on the calendar pages. I don't like this man. <sighs> yep. You've got a bond to him, but bonds don't have it's to be not, good. It's not a good bond. Bond just means this person is... is, is Important and yep. influential. You know, you can mm -hmm. still you can still hate somebody and have a bond mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. them. Yeah, but there he is. He's in your life. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, I well, think that... I'd like to train empathize mm -hmm. because I think what I'd like to do mm -hmm. is go back out into the crowd, mm -hmm. make a point of going back out into the crowd, and sure. like shake some hands, chat with people, make small talk. Mm -hmm. You know, connect with the people because. May not have gone my way. I may have gotten in a little bit of trouble. It may have mm -hmm. hurt my ego a little bit, but I also kind of got what I wanted. Right. So I'm going to go right. chat. I'm going to go shake some hands and feel perhaps not the right kind of joy about that, but <laughs> the joy about it nonetheless. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, since this is uh, training up yep. one of your skills, go ahead and roll a single die. 
That is a one. One, which is good because you want to do these as cheaply as possible. Yep. And then you mark off the second dot there, and that's that's over your threshold. So your empathize is now two. Uh, Just as a reminder, you can increase talents the same way. Uh, The only difference is in that case, you roll three dice and we take the highest one just because, Uh, you know, they're generally more time intensive. Then I think I'm going to do the same thing for charming. Oh, because I've been I've been I've been talking to a lot of people. I think I I think I need to bump that up. Okay, so so roll three dice for that. We take the high die result. That is five. Five. Good. And you're charming. You just mark one below that one below that two more times and that will go up. Great. Okay. So that was a five. Yes. Ah. Okay. So you are finally able to catch up with Gene at, Great. at long last, um, and you wanted to talk to him uh, uh, to sort of follow up with what's yeah. going on with Nilla and all that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, chat with him. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, how is how is your daughter? I heard you had to run out. She's um, just is doing a lot better, actually. I That's mean, great to hear. I was able to sort of... Um, he's got you in the little alcove again, his mm-hmm. little, his little sure. pretend office. <clears throat> We've been able to um, sort some things out, you know. I, uh, I was able to um, take some of the stock and uh, move it, and we were able to afford the medicine. So she's doing a lot better now. Uh, surgery for her. Uh, you uh, need to be better at that. Is, what do you I'm mean? just going to come out and say it. Um, I was uh, actually coming by your office to ask for the afternoon off. I was going to take Hannah on a date, mm-hmm. but I, uh, you were out, so I talked to Nilla, mm-hmm. and. You didn't tell her. Oh, no, no. Mom's the word. I talked her. I calmed her down. She's quite worried about the town, understandably so. Right. But a shipment of our reserve is was missing. And she had it marked in red ink. She used the red ink, Jane. Uh, I'm... I... I've... Look, I, I promise things are going to be... I'm okay. I, I mean, I've almost got what I need. I just, I, I don't need to take anything else. I just I, need to shift what, what, I'm what not I'm asking you to stop taking things. I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you, you need to be smarter about it. If you take an entire shipment, that's going to be noticed every single time. Right. And there's no way, there's no way for any of us. And I lean in a little closer. There's no way for me to cover that. If a shipment goes missing. Right. But if a bottle goes missing here or there, if a few shipment, if a bottle goes here or there, they fell over. A squirrel got them. We get squirrels in here sometimes. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm, I care about your daughter and I care that she's healthy and I care that you get what you need to treat her. Right. But you need to be smarter about this. Okay. Now, one of the things you have noticed about Gene is that he has gotten a lot more drawn, mm-hmm. like paler. Thinner, mm-hmm. you know, than a lot of other people. I mean, the food rationing has begun in sure. town, but in all honesty, it, it looks like he's already, you know, you would say he's probably already starving himself. Mm-hmm. So it, it looks like that he has taken to heart the idea that he's not, he's not living large on this stuff. He, he sure. is. Yeah. So things must be really dire for his, his, uh, his daughter, if that's what it's, what it's. So, yeah, I'm trying to, ha- yeah. I want to have just, uh, I want, I want to get this into his head, but mm-hmm. I think I want to get it to his head through. Because I feel like I can make, I could take a convince or an empathize, mm-hmm. and I think an empathize would be better. Because I want to get it through his head, be like, mm-hmm. "You're no good to your daughter in jail, right?" In one of Dumont's, I don't know what he's gonna, throw, <laughs> but whatever Dumont is thinking, you're no good for your daughter in exactly. that situation. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead. Let's take the, okay. uh, the charming uh, uh, and empathize. Uh, empathize. My newly good. boosted the difficulty empathize. For this one is seven. Okay. Um. I don't think we need a, a debuff on this because he's receptive. To yeah, you. right. I mean, he's yeah, you know, he's receptive to what you're saying. One and one snake eyes. Oh. Four. That's one, two. That's one. That's two, three, four, five. Five. Yep, that's a fail. Yep. Okay. Pain <laughs> takes up by one. Look, I. I know what you're saying, and I agree. It just seems that it's it's really difficult for for me at this time. I mean. We need the money, and it seems like the only way to get the money is through some kind of shady deals. Said, "Oh, <clears throat> hello, sir. Uh, good to see you." I do, I, 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 he gestures behind you, and you wheel around to see uh, Commander Burza is standing there uh, in the doorway. Oh. Commander, hi. Yes, Klaus. I was just uh, coming to find you. Great. 
I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. No, no, no. Just uh, discussing family matters. Oh, I see. Well, I... Uh, I trust we have... I do hate to interrupt, but we, we do need to um, talk with you at uh, command. I must... I must take... I, I must... We'll, 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 we'll pick this up another time. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, veterans' work is never done. I mean, they yes. say they they say they let you go, but they never do. <laughs> Just keep that in mind, Gene. I mean, your son is going to be in the same place one day. And, you know, plus, I'm the rocket man, and I laugh. I laugh loudly, mm-hmm. and I look at Boza, and he's not laughing. <laughs> no, no, Bo- yeah, Bo- Boza, uh, yeah, is, uh... uh <laughs> and I imagine Gene laughs, though. Oh, yeah, Gene, Gene laughs at it. Gene, Gene lets out this really nervous laugh that's a little too high-pitched at first and then <laughs> sort of fades quickly. Uh, and, yeah, there's this, uh, um, you know, takes you with him to the, uh, uh, you know, to, to, the, to his offices mm-hmm. on the other side of the uh, the town hall where, you know, where the, the military uh, offices are. I don't think I want to ask what that was about because I don't think I want to know. It's better if, it's better if the fewer people that know, the better. Mm-hmm. I don't want to find out about you engaging in any kind of black market stuff, okay? We Understood. do a lot to try and keep things quiet here. I also don't like the chatter about Rocket Man or whatever. I know that's that's your code name. I know you got to pick it out and all that. I, I just feel that um let's let's not say it a little too much around here, okay? Understood. I'll it's... try and keep things quiet about that gene um if... situation, but if he's gonna go on shooting his mouth off like that in not even an office, in a in a closet, then well, I hope Understood. you can get through with him and and, and make him Understood. realize the gravity. Okay. So the reason uh, we needed to have you here, we're going to need to deploy you again. But, well, it's going to be a little different this time. Putting us on the defensive again and again is really not going to, to win any wars. It's time for us to to strike back. It's time for us to make something of a, uh, a deep strike, really. Hmm. We're going to... Smuggle you behind enemy lines, transport you as far into their, um, into their country as we can, and then we're going to try and activate you at a point in the capital city of Hansa. Understood. It's going to be a difficult operation, it's going to be a dangerous operation, but we think it's what we need in order to win this war. We need to show them the power that the machine gives us, not just on the battlefield, but even in their own cities, in their own backyard. Looks at he looks at Boza for a very long time. Looks back over his shoulder, sort of in Jean's, in sort of the direction of the winery. He, he he sits there for a second. He scowls just a little bit. Says, "When do we leave?" And that's and yeah. that's that's it for now. Excellent. Whew, that was fun. <laughs> I like that one a lot. That's a good. That was nice, a good installment. Nice. Yep. Yep. It's interesting. You're still doing so well in the battlefields. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Things things are just going too smoothly. But then you get back home, and these people are so unreasonable. Just, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> they're thieves, and they're 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 <sighs> suspicious, and you know, oh, it's it's it's, it's good, great. It's good times. It's family fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> exactly. Thanks so much for coming back on Party of One. This oh, is sure. I, I love this every time we play it. it, it, it the, the campaign play is really, really good. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying it. I'm actually, I feel like I'm learning a lot about my own game the more we get to, to play it like that's this. That's awesome. I love yeah. I love hearing that. Mm-hmm. So real quick before we wrap up, as always, where can people find your work online? Uh, they can go to robotclaw.info to see my blog entries, to learn about Tears of a Machine, and to read more about my attempts to... Uh, get more accessible versions of RPGs out there. Um, you know, Tears of a Machine is available as a downloadable synchronized text audiobook intended for blind and uh, dyslexic uh, gamers to enjoy. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Robot Claw. Um, I can be found on Google Plus, uh, Russell Collins, and uh, yeah, you'll find most of those links at robotclaw.info. Yeah. And they'll all be in the show notes as well. Mm-hmm. Russell, thanks so much for coming on Party of One. This has been a blast. I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take it, future me. Thanks, Fast Me. And thanks again to Russell for coming on to the show. Like I said, I've been loving Project Wingspan. It is one of my favorites. This is so much fun. Be sure to check out Russell's work at robotclaw.info and follow him on Twitter at robotclaw. He's doing some amazing work in games and accessibility. Definitely worth the follow. Definitely worth checking out. 
Then while you're on Twitter, follow this show at Party of One Pod. Like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. If you love the show, consider giving us a nice iTunes review, social media shout out, or word of mouth recommendation. Those are the best ways of helping the show grow, find new listeners, and do bigger, better, and cooler things. You could also consider backing us on Patreon. Patreon backers get access to designer's notes when I play games not designed for two players. They also get bonus materials for the show, shoutouts on air. They get to pick the games that we play and more. You can find all of that out at patreon.com slash partyofonepodcast. If you want to hear more from me, check out All My Fantasy Children, the podcast in which Aaron Catano and I take your listener prompts and turn them into beautiful, thriving, vibrant, role-playing game children. That can be found at soundcloud.com slash allmyfantasychildren. Party of One is produced and edited by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Mega Rand featuring the D&D Sluggers. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates or about coming onto the show, shoot me an email at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And that's it for me. Until next time, thank you for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. And party on. Never gonna die.